Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. This is my annual meetup with Marek at CES, and he's the representative from TCL, probably the most honest product manager ever. So Marek, Happy New Year. Uh, thank you and Happy New Year to you and to your viewers. Right. So at your press conference, TCL announced a new Vidrian mini LED television. Can you explain what's different with the technology compared with your first generation X10 or 8 series? So Vidrian, so let's start maybe uh, what it means. Uh, from Spanish, it means to make the glass. Uh, why to make the glass? Because uh, we use uh, oxide glass uh, backplane uh, to do the second generation of uh, mini LED. So, uh, what was the first generation? The first generation was PCB based and we use uh, passive matrix uh, driving technology. Uh, we were limited by uh, 1000 zones and uh, then uh, the target was uh, how to overcome it and how to be able to increase uh, peak brightness uh, in the TV set. So, uh, we uh, work together with our panel uh, factory with CSOT and uh, we have from them oxide uh, backplane to which uh, we attach uh, LEDs, uh, blue LEDs. And uh, we use active matrix uh, driving. Uh, by uh, this, we can overcome the limit of 1000 zones. Uh, we go to uh, 5000, more than 5000 zones. And then we can also deliver a high amount of energy and also improve uniformity of uh, the backlight. The improvement of uniformity is certainly very appealing because in the past, especially the entry-level and mid-range TCL televisions, they don't really have the best screen uniformity. Can you explain how you achieve that with your vision technology? Uh, well, if you look on the backlight and especially of, on uh, full array local uh, dimming, uh, in, if you want to deliver uh, high uh, peak brightness, uh, so uh, then you have different areas uh, consuming uh, different uh, amount of energy. With uh, passive matrix, uh, you have a kind of side effect uh, on other areas. And with active matrix, it is uh, generally managed uh, separately because energy is delivered uh, uh, to the backplane and then uh, driving is uh, done uh, in an active matrix way. Now, I know that this is only a prototype at the moment. Is there any timeline on of this when this will come to the market? Well, currently on the market, we have uh, passive uh, matrix uh, mini LED uh, solution and this uh, active matrix uh, mini LED solution uh, will come uh, this year to the market. At this show, you also walked me through some new 8K television, namely the 915 for the European market, although probably not the UK market. Can you expand on the specifications of these TVs? X915 we will introduce in Europe by uh, John uh, this year and the product will be fully in line with uh, 8K association specification uh, which means uh, 8K resolution uh, HDMI 2.1 uh, input uh, here we do uh, 8K 60p uh, with uh, eARC uh, with automatic low latency and uh, uh, we still uh, work on uh, VRR also to uh, make it uh, uh, available uh, then it means also that the uh, product comes with quite high brightness, peak brightness of uh, around 1000 nits. Uh, we have also full eye local dimming uh, here. Uh, on uh, the decoding side, uh, we decode 8K uh, in H.265 and AV1. Uh, later on this year, we will provide a YouTube 8K uh, with, uh, to provide access to 8K content to everyone. And of course, uh, there will be this year sources like game consoles, uh, which will provide uh, 8K uh, content uh, both in gaming or in video. When you talk about HDMI 2.1 certification, can you confirm that you support all the features of HDMI 2.1, including eARC and variable refresh rate? Uh, well, as I said, for this uh, X9915, uh, uh, the major target was uh, to be uh, fully compatible with uh, uh, HDMI 2.1 specification for uh, 8K products. Uh, resolution, but also eARC and uh, also automatic low latency. Uh, VRR is a specification which is uh, linked uh, to the panel 
and uh, then I think uh, we, once we will be uh, closer to manufacturing, I will be able to confirm that the VRR is uh, also supported. Okay, what is the status of the X10? Because it was meant to arrive late last year in the European market, but I don't think it went on sale. Will it go on sale this year? Uh, X10, uh, we started to manufacture mid of December and uh, we uh, started to ship to different markets. I think it uh, pop up uh, first in December in Italy and uh, on other markets uh, uh, the product will be available uh, in the beginning of Q1 uh, in uh, France, uh, in Germany, uh, then in uh, Poland. Uh, so uh, production is uh, started. Uh, you are also welcome to our factory to have uh, your extent test and be able to publish uh, this test and compare it with uh, products uh, which are at the same prices and see how supreme is extent. I will certainly take you up on your offer. When I looked at the VGN prototype, it looked extremely impressive with really high color volume and also inky blacks that is afforded by the high number of local dimming zones. You mentioned that there is 5,000 and maybe more specifically 5,184. Is that correct? And what would be the peak brightness that this set is capable of? Well, uh, the product uh, we have here is uh, overpassing uh, 1,000 nits. Uh, and uh, then, uh, as I said, uh, we are not as much limited uh, with peak brightness as with passive matrix uh, technology. Uh, the key difference between UHD and 8K TV set is uh, panel uh, transparency or translucency. Uh, in 8K it is half of uh, UHD, so we have to produce two times more light uh, behind the screen uh, to have the same peak brightness uh, in front of the screen. Uh, but uh, then uh, this is uh, for us uh, the first step uh, to show the technology and show that together with CSOT we are able to deliver it. But I think uh, in uh, something six months from now we will be able to provide uh, exact uh, specification and uh, peak brightness. Thanks a lot for this interview. Again, I wish you to have a good show. Thank you. Thank you for your visit and uh, see you in our factory with excellent tests.